This 3D film was developed to illustrate how to harness the full potential of automatic electric stunning in a high throughput pig slaughterhouse so that stress and fear among the pigs can be kept to a minimum. Electric stunning, when done properly and calmly, can render pigs unconscious immediately without any suffering. However, in a high throughput slaughterhouse where hundreds of pigs are to be slaughtered per hour, the design of the facilities and equipment and the way the animals are handled are extremely important to get right. This new innovative design and the improved animal handling techniques are the result of three years of collaboration between the pig slaughter industry, the Dutch Society for the Protection of Animals, and the animal welfare organization Eyes on Animals with online guidance from Dr. Temple Grandin. We believe this improved electric stunning method is the most humane method of stunning pigs available today for high throughput slaughterhouses. There are nine critical success factors that must be unconditionally put into place for a proper result. After presenting these crucial factors one by one, we will digitally walk you through the slaughterhouse and zoom in on the positions of each worker involved in the moving of live pigs through the process. Here we will explain the way the worker is to perform his task in that specific position in order to keep the pigs flowing in a calm way forward without fear and stress. The first success factor is reducing time pressure on the entire process by increasing stunning capacity. Instead of just using one automatic electric stunner, we have now installed four while still processing the same number of animals per hour. This greatly reduces time pressure. Pigs and workers should never feel rushed. In patient chasing of pigs through a system by overworked and frustrated employees is the main cause of animal suffering. The second success factor is moving the pigs in small, manageable groups of six animals so that the animals have sufficient freedom of movement throughout the entire process and the workers have control over the direction of the group. Moving large number of pigs always leads to bottlenecks, confusion and panic among the pigs and frustration among the workers. The third success factor is placing at least two single file raceways next to each other so that the pigs have a choice of where to enter and can enter simultaneously, side by side. This gives the pigs the feeling that they are still walking in a group, which they prefer to single file. Pigs move most easily when allowed to move side by side and when given a choice in escape route. The fourth success factor is timing the bunches well. It is important to wait and only move pigs forward when the previous group is far enough along in the process and all gates or guillotine doors are open again. This will prevent pigs facing closed doors, dead ends or clogged raceways, which cause pigs to get nervous and want to turn around. The fifth success factor is avoiding creating noise. This applies to all forms of noise. Personnel should not whistle or shout. Equipment should be as silent as possible, like gates, hydraulics, and chains. And handling tools should be silent. There should be no rattling paddles or plastic clappers or workers banging equipment against gates. All handling tools should be painless and noiseless, such as a plastic bag, a plastic flag, a cleaning brush, or a moving board. Less noise in the environment makes for calmer pigs that are easier to handle. They feel less fearful and will vocalize less, further avoiding noise created by their screams. The sixth success factor is avoiding visual distractions. Each step in the process should literally be judged through the pig's eyes. A clear lit up exit should be the only thing that the pig sees up ahead. Shiny reflections on the walls, equipment moving up ahead, shadows on the ground, and strong color contrast. These should all be excluded from the design as they make the pigs hesitate and it stops the flow. The seventh success factor is that the view of workers and other people ahead should always be blocked at all costs. The current way that most pigs are raised is with very little human contact, and what contact there is is usually negative, Therefore, visibility of people results in pigs feeling fearful to move forward. 
they'll want to turn around or walk away. The eight success factors giving staff the knowledge, skills, and assistance to enable them to do a good job. Don't set them out to fail by ignoring the importance of training. Develop customized training materials for each work position and in their language. In doing so, focus not only on what the workers should do, but also why they should do it. Make them understand the effect of their behavior and movements on the pig's welfare and teach them about pig behavior and empathy. The ninth and last success factor is using artificial intelligence control tools, such as smart cameras, to monitor that handling is at all times correct and identify problems quickly so that they can be solved. We use AI cameras to verify that only small groups of six pigs are moved at a time and that no handling tools, such as electric stimulators, are misused. Now we will show you how we applied these crucial factors in a large Dutch pig slaughterhouse and the positive effects they have on making the process much more humane. To get a group of pigs from the larage pens, do not walk in between the pigs, but instead walk in a parallel empty, or if not possible, along the edge of the walls of the loaded pens. Only wake up the first group of 12 pigs close to the exit so as not to unnecessarily disturb all pigs in the pen. Do not use rattling paddles or any other handling tool that creates noise. Use a noises tool like a flag to get the first group of 12 pigs up and to guide them towards the exit of the pen. Guide them by moving your arms slowly and smoothly. Never hit the pigs or move your arms abruptly. Do not make any loud noise. No shouting or loud whistling. Gentle talking is acceptable. Close the gate calmly behind you to avoid creating a loud bang when being shut. Larage pens need sufficient and well-designed step-ins so that people can easily get in and out of them. They need to be low enough to easily get in without risking injury or exhaustion and sufficient in number that a person can get in without having to walk through many pigs. A flag can be a flexible plastic sheet at the end of a lightweight plastic rod. Cutting a plastic bag open and taping it to a light plastic rod is adequate. Gates need rubber stoppers to avoid excessive banging noise when shut. Gates should be easy to shut without the workers needing to fiddle or risking injuring their fingers. Timing is crucial. Open and close the gate at the right time to smoothly divide the upcoming group of 12 pigs into two groups of six pigs. No more than six pigs should be passed into each crowd pen. Avoid a group of pigs approaching a closed gate. Time the opening so that the flow of pig movement remains smooth. Use continuous non-verbal communication with the larage pen person and with the crowd pen person. Do not shut a gate abruptly or harshly on an approaching pig. Should there be seven pigs in a group approaching, it is sometimes wiser to let the seventh animal stay in the group rather than forcing him or her out of the group. Group size passing through the crowd pen should be six pigs, with seven pigs a rare exception. Keep your movement calm. Pigs sense when you are nervous and feeling excited. Try to stay out of the sight of the pigs when the pigs approach the gate or walk by it. Your presence should be discreet. Gates must have rubber stoppers to reduce noise when being shut or opened. Gates must be solid to avoid pigs trying to get through any gaps in them. Gates should be light in weight and easy to open and close. There should be no need to fiddle with latches or risk of getting your fingers hurt. Once the group of six pigs walks past your point of observation, step into the beginning of the crowd pen. Always walk behind, not beside or in front, of the group of six pigs. Use a solid plastic moving board. Try to keep a distance between you and the last pig of the group. Chasing them or moving in too close just causes pigs to panic and will waste time. 
Give the pigs time to explore the entrances into the two parallel single files. They need time to assure themselves that it is safe and walkable. Once the first pig calmly goes in, the others usually feel confident and follow. Never shout or scream or whistle. Do not slam your moving board against the side walls or floor to create noise. You can place your hands lightly on the backs of the pigs to guide them in. When all the pigs have entered the single files and the guillotine doors are down, exit the crowd pen at the exit door. Do not walk back through the crowd pen. Keep the floor clean to avoid puddles from forming, which cause reflections. These reflections can cause pigs to balk. The side walls of the crowd pen must be completely solid and tall, at least two meters high, to block the pig's view of any distractions or workers up ahead. Have a step in at the very beginning of the crowd pen so that one can step in always behind and not in front of the group of six pigs that have been brought out of the larage pen. Only use a plastic board to guide the pigs forward here. Have an exit door for the crowd pen person to exit right at the very end of the crowd pen beside the guillotine doors. This so that the person never has to walk back through the crowd pen but rather around it out of sight of any upcoming pigs. Light up the crowd pen so that it is very visible for the pigs. It should be more lit up than the larage, but a bit less than the single file entrance. Pigs move more easily towards areas that are lit up. Make sure there are no dark shadows or drains or any other distractions on the floor where the pigs need to walk. When walking, pigs have their eyes directed towards the floor, so keep the floor free of any distractions. Keep yourself and also your tools, for example a cleaning brush, out of sight of the upcoming pigs whose turn it is to enter the single file raceway. If pigs in the crowd pen see you or your tools moving up ahead, they will be too nervous to enter the single file and will want to turn around. Timing of the guillotine doors being opened and closed is crucial. Try to keep both doors open at the same time to allow pigs the feeling that they are remaining in a group side by side while entering the single file raceways. Never close the guillotine doors on the backs of the pigs. This is very painful for the pigs and disrupts the waiting pigs from entering. Avoid abruptly opening and closing the guillotine doors repeatedly. Pigs will not enter if the guillotine doors are moving up and down a lot in front of their sight. Try to keep the guillotine doors fully open until all six pigs are in and shut the doors only once the group has entered. Never enter the crowd pen or interfere with crowd pen person's tasks. Link up the flow of the pigs to the light signals. If the light is green, pigs can be moved forward through the system. If the light is red, slow the flow. Anti-reverse doors in the single file tunnel should not be solid, but have see-through gaps in them so that the pigs can see through them. If solid, pigs will think that they are an obstruction and will be fearful of pushing through them to move forward. Side walls are high enough to prevent pigs from viewing the workers up ahead. The roof of the entire single file raceway should never touch the backs of the pigs. If a pig feels the roof on his or her back, the pig will automatically reverse, fearful that he or she will get stuck. Tools used to move the pigs forward here should not be pointy or painful or noisy. A cleaning brush is an example of an acceptable handling tool. This area should be very well lit up. The pig is going from a large group situation into a single file. If dark, the pig will hesitate and not enter. Avoid the creation of shadows on the floor as pigs are hesitant to walk over a shadow, fearful that they are holes in the ground. Keep calm and don't rush the pigs. Stay back, well out of sight of the upcoming pigs moving through the single file and just let them move forward at their own pig pace. Pigs need time here to get accustomed to a very foreign environment. Do not rush them. 
Only approach the single file if one pig really stops the flow for too long, for example three to five seconds, and needs your interference. Only the first pig in the line should be touched, first with the brush. If the brush does not help, then you can use the electric stimulator. If a pig becomes unwell, for example a panic attack, a heart attack, or a leg injury, do not force the animal forward, but immediately open the side access doors and release the animal. This animal should be manually stunned and bled out right away. This area should be very well lit up. Pigs move towards more lit up areas. This area should be free from shadows. A false floor needs to be in place and made out of the same color. The false floor gives the pigs the visual feeling that the floor continues and avoids the cliff effect. This area should be free from color contrast. The conveyor belt needs to be the same color as the inner walls and false floor. The chest conveyor belt should be lowered to a more approachable level and not be seen as a huge physical barrier. The roof of the restraint conveyor belt should be flexible in height and never touch the backs of the pigs. If a pig feels a roof on his or her back, the pig will automatically reverse fearful that he or she will become stuck. Make sure the electric parameters are correct and regularly checked. Make sure the electric prongs are kept clean and regularly maintained. Install a light here to draw the attention of the pig, so that the pig's head is in the right position for optimum placement of the automatic electric prongs. The pig should look straight forward and not to the side. Make sure each and every pig is stuck immediately upon exiting the conveyor belt. Make sure the incision is large enough to ensure profuse bleeding. Correct the incision if not done correctly the first time. Restun the pig immediately using manual electric stunners if signs of regaining consciousness are observed. Make sure the knife is of the right length and sharpness. Sharpen the knife regularly and keep it clean. Make sure manual electric stunners are within reach for every person responsible for sticking the pigs. Make sure the manual electric stunners are regularly cleaned and checked to be in perfect working order. This video was made possible with additional funding by the Dutch Society for the Protection of Animals.